Hey guys, it's Daniel with Dan Automotive Performance. We're here in Maryland. So today, my friend Billy here, we wanted to make kind of a video series on how to work on your car, Mitsubishi, Rally Art, Evo X, GSR, or MR. Um, so we're gonna be, this video series is gonna cover a lot of different maintenance aspects of the car. Today it's gonna be the coolant flush, fill and change, and how to take care of that whole system. Um, but we're going to stress trying to use the most simplest methods, the simplest tools, because we want anybody to be able to do this. And we're doing this here today in the driveway and not on a lift because we want anybody to be able to do this. And we're gonna show you the most basic tools that you need to do the job. And instead of fancy lifts or vacuum systems, you know, we'll, we'll basically show you everything that you need to get it done and efficiently and get you back on the road. So the first step, well, for him, because he has an SSP under panel, we took off the front bumper so that we can channel the coolant away from the car and not onto the ground or the under panel. Now, normally what you would do is you would take off the entire under panel after you have the car jacked up on jack stands. You don't need to put all four jack stands on just on the front, but because of his SSP under panel and how heavy it is, we're just making it easier and it was actually better to take off the front bumper and we just use this plastic channel to pull the coolant away from the car once we start draining into the drain pan. For most of you who have the plastic under panel, like I said, just remove the entire under panel and you'll have access to there. But if you feel like taking off the front bumper, which to me is easier, it's a lot faster, even without the other under panel. So whatever method works, either way. So the first step you need to do is get your tools, which will cover which tools you need at the end of the video to do the whole process. It doesn't matter whether it's quarter inch, half inch, three quarters. You just need to make sure that you have plenty of extensions and a 10 millimeter socket. So if you come over here and look, this is the first bolt down here that you're going to remove and this is a 10 millimeter bolt. So you're just gonna take this out. Make sure you put your hand down here before you pull off the, the ratchet and that way the bolt doesn't fall down inside your engine bay somewhere. That's just the trick of the trade that a lot of people don't pay attention to, but it's something that'll make your life a lot better so you don't lose it. So you wanna take that off, put that to the side. These absorber pads right here, we sell these with our coolant change kits. If you want, you can get them from the store, but if you order anything from us, we'll include one for you. Unscrew your cap and just tap it off until you can see all the coolant drain out of the tube. And then go ahead and sit it on the absorber pad and get it out of the way. You don't want to get the stuff on your skin, it will irritate it. And then you're just literally going to pull the coolant tank right out of the cradle. And it's a single bracket that holds it in right here. So as you can see, one thing to remember is this has a rubber gasket on it and it's been known to fall down inside the coolant tank, which you can see right here, which it did. So you just need to make sure that when you clean this out, you fish that out of there, and then you put it back on here. It goes in here around this ring. So once you get to this point, go ahead and stop. What you're going to do is you're gonna dump out this coolant, and then you just need to wipe off the tank and wash the complete inside of the tank, get all the dirt out of there. Because for a lot of people, if you can see, if you look down inside of there, up in that corner, there's a bunch of sediment and dirt built up and that's stuff that you don't want floating around inside your coolant system. So that's the purpose of doing a coolant flush aside from the coolant being bad because the thermal, all the, the heat breaks it down. You wanna make sure that you get all that dirt out of there which there's plenty in there. Now, we're not putting this one back in the car today. We're gonna to be putting an aftermarket tank back in the car but the principles remain the same about when it gets reinstalled. Just make sure that this tank is completely cleaned off, wash this out and then we'll move on to the next step. So we're gonna sit this to the side right now. And when you put it back in the car, it goes back in the same way. Fill it up to the full mark, and then just put the bolt back in. So it's pretty self-explanatory. So down here is how you drain the coolant. On the, the right side of the car, the passenger side, there's, there's a little rubber grommet right here. And this right here, this little, this little key, you just turn it to the left gently until the coolant starts draining out. Make sure that your radiator fill, fill plug is taken off. Just crack it open to make sure it's loose. That way it doesn't create a vacuum. 
and then just continue screwing this until the coolant starts to come out. Once the coolant starts to come out, you want it to be a slow drip. You do not want to remove this plug all the way for two reasons. One, if you remove it all the way, it'll come shooting out and coolant will go everywhere and all over the ground. This stuff is very poisonous, so you don't want it on the ground. The other part of it is, is it's actually possible to strip this and when you go to put it back in, it will not go back in. And then you need a new radiator. So to prevent that, it doesn't happen all the time, but it is possible. Just open it just enough for the coolant to drain out. Be patient and get all the coolant drained out. Once it stops or it comes just to a tiny little drip, turn it to the right, retighten it, and then we'll go on to our part of the video. So now we've drained out all the coolant. If you look down here, it's come to a slow drip. You actually want to leave that open. And like I said, just make sure it, it comes to a, as slow a drip as possible. And what we're going to do next is, and this is, we're just going to point out, this is why you get like an absorbent cloth or a towel. You see how much drained out of here and backflowed onto from the system once we started draining everything out. But now what we're going to do is you're going to get a funnel and some distal water. And the reason that we use distal water, you can in theory use regular tap water to flush out your system, but there are some theories behind that. Some people say because of the minerals inside of tap water that they can cause rust. If you don't have tap water, purified bottled water would just be you know, equally as good. Um, but distilled water, if you can get that, that would obviously be the best. And that's only because of the type of process that they use to make this. It's safest for the system, but like I said, I've never seen any negative effects from people running tap water through their system to flush it out, but just because we're doing things by the book, we'll use distilled water to clean out the system and we'll prevent any rust or any sediment or any minerals from building up. So what you want to do is you want to slowly pour this in your system, in your coolant system, until it completely fills up. Once it fills up, you want to stop because what you're going to let it do is all that distilled water, you're going to let it drain down through the system again and that's going to effectively flush out your system. Now there are other ways to do this and they do sell tools to pressurize the system and whatnot. but again we're sticking to the basics and keeping things simple. So it's pretty self-explanatory, just get yourself a funnel, put it in the radiator fill neck and just fill the system up so you see it start draining and then once it gets full at the fill neck let it drain out again and then we'll go on to the last part of video which is refilling the system and capping everything off. You know, as you can see we've got the coolant tank reinstalled now obviously this is not the factory coolant tank but the concept remains the same when you go to put the other one tank back in make sure it's all cleaned up and whatnot resecure all your connections put it back in there and plug it back in so what we're going to do is we're going to fill up the coolant reservoir first and then we're going to fill up the actual coolant system so how far are you filling this coolant reservoir up to this one you want to fill about halfway um, you don't need, it, because it's an overflow tank, the most important part is making sure you have enough coolant inside the system itself. So we're only going to fill it to about three quarters, not even that, about halfway down to here. Which on your factory tank, it has a low line and a, a max fill line, so it's pretty self-explanatory. On aftermarket tanks, it doesn't have it. But like I said, you don't actually need that much fluid in the overflow tank to do the job. So we're just going to fill this up and then we'll go into the next part and we'll fill up the actual system itself. Now the important thing is when you install an aftermarket tank there's a lot of tanks out there that they should come with breathers, but some don't. You need to make sure that you have a breather attached to it. And the purpose of that is that if it overflows or the pressure it, it fills up the tank, it has somewhere to go. We've routed this to the bottom of the car right underneath the under panel with this hose right here. That way if the system becomes overpressurized and fluid needs to backflow, it has somewhere to go. You have to have a breather. The factory one that comes with the car has a breather. But for this one, that way it doesn't destroy your engine bay. If coolant comes backwards, it will come out and down the bottom of the car onto the street instead of all over your car. So when you're filling up the system, you want to keep an eye to make sure that you obviously don't spill and overfill it. Because you're going to fill a little bit at a time, take off the funnel, and you want to make sure that it drains down inside the entire system. Now one thing you can do to help it along 
is as you're filling it, if you have a buddy, you can have somebody squeeze the coolant hoses, and what that does is it'll push out any air bubbles or pockets that build up inside of there, and it'll help get the coolant down inside around the motor and into the radiator. And you just want to fill a nice, slow, methodical way. You don't want to rush anything because, like I said, you want to give it enough time to get through the system and into all the parts. Now once this is completely filled up, we're just going to stop for a second so we can explain the next part. Once you have it totally filled up and it comes up to here, squish the hoses, squeeze them, make sure that everything is, it, there's no air bubbles or, then, or not. If you have another person that can do this for you, it's easier, but get inside the car, turn the car on, put the heat on high, is the highest it'll go, and what you want to do is you want to wait for this to start rising up. As soon as it start, rises up, shut the car off and immediately put the cap on, and what that does is it gets all the air bubbles out of your system, and that's the purpose of turning the heat on. But as soon as you start, like I said, seeing it rise up um, from the bottom down here, it's pushed all the air out of the system and it's pressurizing itself, and if you don't put the cap on, the fluid will run out. So you don't want to fill the fluid all the way to the top, you want to fill it to the very bottom of here, right on the edge, it's kind of hard to see. But as soon as you do that, the system will pressurize itself once the car is running, and you can cap it off, and then you're done. Just secure all your connections, put everything back together, and you're good to go. If you have any questions, you can hit me up directly at the store, 443-707-5951. Um, the other, the last thing I'll leave you with, we're using Mitsubishi Long Life Super Coolant, but you can use Pentafrost, you can use Amdoil, Mishimoto, makes a great coolant, any high performance coolant. You don't want to use the generic, you know, regular 50-50 coolant that you get from AutoZone or something. You want to actually use a performance coolant only because this car runs extremely hot and because it is a performance turbocharged vehicle, you want to make sure that you have a coolant that doesn't break down from the heat and that it can do its job. So I'll leave you with that. Like I said, if you have any questions, reach out to me or let me know. Thank you. What's up guys? Billy here. Um, we're a few days out from doing my coolant flush and along with my new coolant tank reservoir. Um, fluid's still good, no leaks. Um, so here's good. I was going to take it off so I could show you, but I just got done running my car, so it's pretty hot. Um, tools, what do we use? We use the flathead screwdriver to get these off. Miss, missing that one, been missing that. Got there. And then along here, we got those. And that was to pop off the front bumper. 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter socket, doesn't matter. Quarter inch, half inch, three quarters. As long as you got enough extensions to get down to here which isn't much of an extension but if you're gonna add a coolant tank aftermarket you're gonna need more of an extension for down there <clears throat> but other than that I want to give a big thank you to Daniel from Danco Automotive um, man I can't stand straight but uh I want to give a big thank you to Dan Automotive and Daniel, the owner. So, leave a big thumbs up. Um, comment down below what you would like to see more of. If you like this instructional video, if you want to know more of an instruction on how to do this or any other service, um, we have plenty of rally arts and evos that we can find one of us that needs whatever you guys want done and we can get it done so thank you for watching and we'll till the next one we'll see you again